911. What's the address? Of yeah, I need an ambulance. Cat, ten forty-five Chicken Street. I need officers here. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay. Man, I'm going I'm going to be in there. Hold on, hold on. What's the address? It's not coming up. Seven four five Chicken. Seven four five Chicken. Is it a house or an apartment? Yeah, it's just a house. Okay, go ahead and repeat the address. To make sure I have it right. Seven forty-five Chicken Street. Okay, what's your callback phone number? Seven one six two zero one. Okay, tell me exactly what happened. December 12, 2015, Aurora, Colorado. A woman by the name of June Lee Simpson calls 911 to report an attack on herself and her daughter. Here's a 911 call. Tell me exactly what happened. He stabbed my daughter and me over here at my house. Okay. <laughs> he stabbed you? Yes. Okay, and your daughter? Yes. Okay, how old is And he gave me more than knife now. Is he still he there? More knives. Yes. Uh, can you get away from him? <laughs> Sam? <laughs> can you get away from him? <laughs> Hello? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get help on the way over there, okay? <laughs> Where is he at right now? Hello? Run around the car! Okay. Ma'am, is there somewhere that you guys can go to get away from him? No, we're trying to go to his house and his. Okay. Can you guys get in a vehicle and lock the doors? Can you go lock the doors somewhere? No, we can't. Come back here. Okay. All right. What is the male wearing? He's wearing black jacket. Okay. What what else? What color pants? Black jeans. Call the okay. police. We have help. We have a lot of help coming that way. Okay. Oh my okay. Where is your daughter at right now? My she's in the street. Stay here. Okay. How old is he? He's forty-seven years and fifty years old. Okay. What race is he? Ma'am, what race is he? He's a spirit. Okay, you see, he has on a black jacket. What color pants? Okay, hurry. We have help coming, ma'am, okay? What color pants does he have on? He's got black on. Okay, black jacket, okay, black he's pants. Got he's got knives. Okay, all right. Can we, can, are you in a place to get your daughter away from him? Hello? Ma'am? Ma'am, we have help coming as quickly as they can, okay? Can you get your daughter away from him? Are you, is it safe for you to do so? No, we're in the street. We need help. We have help coming. How old is your daughter? She's right Okay, is your daughter still awake? Hello? I need help. Okay, we have help coming, ma'am. How is your daughter still awake? Hello? Okay. Ma'am? Okay, are you where is your daughter? She's in the middle of the street laying down. Okay, is she is she awake? Hello, is she awake? Shoot him, shoot him! Hello? Hello? Don't let him stand over there! No, don't throw him down there! Hello? Don't die, Daddy! Hello? Run! Ma'am, can you tell me, is your daughter awake? Yeah, she's awake. Okay. How, how many times has he stabbed her? <laughs> Hello? No, my daughter is running around. Get out of here. Hello? Hello? Yes. 
Hello? Yes. Oh my God. Hello, where's your daughter? Yeah, where's your daughter? Hold on, Lena. Oh my dear God! Ma'am, what is your name? My name is June. June, what's your last name? Simpson. Okay, June. Is the officers there with you? Yeah, they are. They have one to care. Okay. I have. I'm glad to let you go. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Within minutes, police arrive to the disturbing scene on the 700 block of North Kenton Street. There, they find 28-year-old Mireya Ramirez, who was killed by her boyfriend. She leaves behind four children. The suspect was shot to death by a police officer who refused to drop a knife when ordered to do so. 28-year-old Mireya Ramirez died. She leaves behind four children. Now, the boyfriend, known to the family as Romero, ran out after her. But once he caught up, he attacked her again, stabbing her repeatedly. Police arrived in three minutes and ordered Romero to drop the knife. He didn't. And our officer got there and did what he had to do to, to try to save her life. The mother, June Lee Simpson, was stabbed as well, but recovered from her injuries. And Aurora Police Chief Nick Met says, The officer that shot the suspect probably saved a lot of lives that night. The man was in a stage of rage and would have stabbed anyone that got in his way. And the man that committed this heinous crime was 51-year-old Efrain Villanueva, who constantly abused Mireya Ramirez. By the way, no images of Efrain were released. Not sure why they concealed his identity. And again, Police Chief Nick Nick also said, Domestic violence calls tend to increase in the month of December, with many lives at risk. These type of calls are one of the most dangerous that our officers can respond to because it's very emotional. They can be very volatile. He also reminded everyone to not be afraid to call 911. It's that old cliche, see something, say something. One, what's the address of your emergency? We're at the Miami River. We're at the behind Miami the, River? Yeah, we're at the behind the plantation where the water comes out. August 25th, 2014, in the Great Miami River in Lemon Township, city of Monroe, a 17 year old young man calls 911 to report that his friend is drowning. At the Miami, Miami River? Friend drowned. Who? Caleb. How old is the individual? I think he's 13 or he's 12. I tried to get him, but he got swept away. You said 13 year old was drowning? I think he did. He went underneath the water. Okay, and you said where at in my river? Behind the plantation. I think it might be a little Miami. I'm not for sure. Okay. And what's your name, ma'am? Oh my guy. My name's Dalton Cox. Is he? Are you at the lower level dam? Or I'm not at a park? dam. I'm at the. I'm at the plantation. You at the where plantation the factory? Where the water comes out. All right. Okay, ma'am. Are you in Monroe? No, I'm in Middletown, Excello. Okay. Are you, you said you're in Middletown? Yes. Okay, let me get you over there in one moment. Okay, ma'am? Yes. Okay, sorry, describe exactly to me where you are. Um, there's a plantation where the shit comes out. You know, an Excello. Excello? You're by the trailer park? My friend is drowned. He's I understand. I need to get help to where you are, sir. I need to know exactly where you are. Are you, like, where the bridge is from Trenton to Monroe? Is that where you're talking about? 
Underneath there? No, we are behind the plantation where the water comes out. In what city? What road are you on? Old Oxford State, I think. Okay, on Old Oxford State? Yes. That plantation, right behind it where the water comes out. Okay, and and he's underneath the water now? Yes, he's been under there for a while. I think he's grounded. How old is he? I think he's 12 or 13. Okay, hold on just a second. Oh, my God. Okay, sir, stay on here with me. You, how deep's the water? Monroe Police and Fire, fire with emergency. It's it's county with the transfer. This gentleman's advising that his friend is drowning in the water. He said it's behind the plantation near Old Oxford State. Behind the plantation? Yeah. Sir? Sir, are you there? Yes. What's going on, sir? Me and my friend was fishing. He just yeah. had to go swimming. He couldn't get past the current. Behind so the plantation in Oxford State? Keep talking to me. I, had to, I tried to get it. get it, but I couldn't. I couldn't get it. He's still in the water right now? <laughs> I've seen him go under. Is it in the Miami River or is it in a pond? It's in the Miami River. It's in the Miami River. I don't see him nowhere. It's probably 30 foot deep. Uh, You're, right be You're right behind the plantation? Yeah, that's where we was, right where the water comes out. How long ago was this? This was probably five minutes ago. As soon as I got out of the water, I had to run back to my phone. About five minutes ago? It's probably been longer than that, probably about eight or nine. Uh, since you've last seen him, eight or nine minutes? Yeah, I've seen him go under the water. I couldn't get to him. <laughs> And then and he just went under. He kept swimming to the bank when he just went under. And I don't see him nowhere. Okay, there's people coming right now. I hear him. So I have to drive over to the, over the levee. What's your name, sir? Dalton Cox. You saw it for me? D A L T O N C O X. What's your phone number? Two seven zero two eight two. Can you still see your friend at all? I can't see him. Can you see him responding? I hear ambulances, but I don't know. He said it's been about eight or nine minutes since he's seen him. <laughs> Where are you at right now, sir? I'm on the levee. He's on the levee. So I can see the road. You can see the road? I, I, I can hear the ambulance. Right there's the police department. They just drove by. Where exactly are you at right now? You're on the levee? On the levee, yes. That's the fastest way for him to come back here. He's on the levee. I don't levee have a shirt right. on. I have camouflage pants. No shirt, or camouflage, camouflage pants. shorts. And this is what you're wearing? Yes, they got camouflage shorts on and no shirt. Okay. Cam what was your friend wearing? Do you remember? He had gray pants on and no shirt. <laughs> Gray pants and no shirt? Yeah. Okay. I just thought he was joking that he couldn't get there because he was joking before. And then he really started going under. And I just couldn't. I tried to get him, but I couldn't. He was too far out. Okay. Are you still in the same spot, sir? Yeah, I'm walking towards the end of the road. You're walking towards the end of the road? Yeah, where the levee meets the road. Okay.
I don't see no cops or nothing. Everybody's being dispatched, sir. Just hang tight. Where are you at now, sir? Are you still in that same area? Yeah, I'm heading to the road. The trailer park's across the street. You're at the end of the road and the trailer park's right in front of you? Yeah, I mean, I'm at the end of the levee. Okay. I didn't hear the uh, details uh, post-dispatch. I'll, I'll just get right now. Go ahead. Do you hear sirens yet? No, I've seen a cop go by and that was it. Okay. I've seen him go under. You did see him go under? Yes. He was kind of swimming, but his head was underneath the water. And then where he was going, where the direction he was going to, it's probably 30 foot deep or deeper. Okay. Still there, sir? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay. I hear an ambulance. I see it. Okay. Hang tight just a minute until they get to you, please. All right. Bye. They went by you? Yes, yeah, a uh, police officer and an ambulance. They just went by. I waved at him, but I don't even think they see me. You're at the end of the levee right there? Yeah, I'm wearing no shirt and camouflage shorts. Police, you're okay. I'm just getting ready to pull them now. Which one I get to I see another one. He said that they're driving by him. He's at the end of the levee, camouflage, camouflage shorts, no shirt. Another one just drove by. See any more vehicles, sir? No, they just all went by us. Just it. There's three of them that went by an ambulance and two, two police cars. <clears throat> should I go back there and see if I see them anywhere, or what should I just stay at the end of the road? Yeah, just stay where you're at right now until someone can find you. So that they've all driven past him. So it's just one the one that's just traffic. Uh, I'll you about the bank. That's what's called. Call 21. Call 21. He's got the collar of a line. Whatever we do. See if he's close to the bridge or, or what, but we don't see him. So are you standing in a visible place where they can see you, or are you down off yes, the I'm bridge? Yes, at the end of the road. There's a place right beside me called Smitty's Auto Parts and Towing. There's a place right beside him called Smitty's Auto Parts and Towing. He's right at the end of the road. I 
hear another siren. Okay. Hey, Claire. Okay, where are you at? You would have him come out by the road to meet one of us, bring us back there. Can you go out by the road? Can you go in the yeah, office there? standing right beside the road okay. on the left side. He's advising he's standing right beside the road on the right side. Right. No, on the left side. Oh. Across the street from the trailer park. Correction, he's on the left side across from the trailer park. I see a fire truck. I'm waving at him. I don't know if they see me or not. Do you see any officers? Yeah, I see a police officer right behind you. Okay. Yeah, they're pulling in. My friend is drowning. He's at the... Okay, sir. Right. Have you made contact? Yeah, but they're going the wrong way. I don't know why they're not going on the levee. He's right behind me. So you've spoke with someone, but they've went the other yeah, way? They said, yes, they said that they're going there right now. He's turning into the plantation. There's a police officer coming. That's clear. Do what? Right there. He, he, I see him okay. go under the water right there. Okay, sir, I'm going to let you go so you can talk to the officer. Yes, there's like a cliff right there. By Old Oxford State, just east of the Old Oxford State Engine 5. Sorry, an officer's walking that way. Engine 61, we're going to be down that way. Okay. I'm going to let you go, sir, so you can speak with the officer. All right. Okay, thank you. No problem. Bye. The body of a 13-year-old drowning victim was recovered hours after he was swept up by a current in the Great Miami River. This section of the Miami River is known to be very dangerous. There's a lot of uh, varying depths uh, in that particular waterway. Uh, the water moves fairly rapidly, uh, and although on the surface it may appear to be moving at a slow rate, um, there's a definitive undertow in that area, and it can um, easily pull uh, an adult good swimmer underwater. Caleb's grandparents came down to the river this afternoon to see for themselves the place where he drowned. This isn't the first tragedy the family has had to endure. Caleb's mother died five years ago. Caleb was an eighth grader here at Middletown Middle School. They brought in extra counselors to help classmates and faculty deal with their grief. And according to Butler County's Sheriff Richard K. Jones. At approximately 6.30 p.m., 13-year-old Caleb Spivey and the friend were fishing at the Great Miami River in the Mint Township city of Monroe. Caleb entered the water and was caught in the current and never resurfaced. The Butler County Regional Water Rescue Team, along with Monroe Police and Monroe Fire EMS, responded to the Scene. The water rescue team was able to locate the victim by using a rescue boat that is equipped with a side scan sonar system. The coroner's office ruled Spivey's death as an accidental drowning. No charges were filed. By the way, guys, if you decide to get into a river, please be safe. I'll link this article here by USDA.gov, which gives you great tips when getting into rivers and streams. Yeah. 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 I said no. No. Maddie, what's the house up? What's the house up here? <laughs> Ten seven years close. Okay, what's your name? Oh, this is the one of me. <laughs> what's going on? March 23rd, 2014, Georgetown, Ohio. Police were called at around 9 p.m. to the home of Stacy Flora in the 1000 block of Shinkles Ridge Road outside of Georgetown. The person making the 911 call is Joanna, Stacy's mother. Joanna then proceeds to tell the dispatcher that her daughter is, and quote, cold as ice and not breathing. What's going on? I just walked in the room, my daughter's dead! <laughs> Okay. 
What makes you think that she's that? She's cold as ice. She's dead. <laughs> she's as cold as ice. <laughs> okay, do you want to check for a pulse, or do you think that no, she's beyond help? No, she's dead. Okay, what I need you to do then is leave the room, okay? Uh, I need everybody to leave the room. Okay. <laughs> What's your name? What about me? What? 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 what is your name? Mommy, so shut up. What? What is your name? Stacy Moore. Okay, Stacy. What's your daughter's name? No, my name is Joanna Mead. Her name is Stacy Moore. <laughs> your name is Joanna. What's your last name? Mead. M-E-A-D-E? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. Joanna? Yeah. Uh, you just found her like this? Was she home alone? Uh, yeah. I've had her kids all weekend. <laughs> I don't know how she's been there. <laughs> okay, take a deep breath. Oh, my God. <laughs> Joanna, Joanna, take yeah. a deep breath. I need you to leave the room. Have you left the room? Yeah.
Daniel Simoski was charged with the murder of his girlfriend, 30-year-old Stacy Flora. She was found shot to death inside her home on a Sunday afternoon. Okay, and this is what's so shocking about this case. Just hang on, I promise it's gonna make sense. Days before the shooting of Flora, according to a police report, on January 13, deputies arrived at Flora's home to find a drunken Simoski firing weapons in the backyard. He went to jail and deputies took a 45 caliber handgun, a 22 rifle, and a 12 gauge shotgun. Samoski pleaded guilty on a lesser charge, and on March 17th, a judge ordered his weapons to be returned to him. Surveillance video from outside of the Brown County Sheriff's Office then captures Samoski and his girlfriend Flora picking up a number of his firearms one Friday morning. Stacy Flora walks into the Brown County Sheriff's Office with her daughter in her arms. Her boyfriend, Daniel Samoski, is right behind her. Inside, deputies hand Samoski three guns. And Chief Deputy John said in a statement, We signed the weapons back over to him, and both of them left together, and then to find out Sunday that she has been killed. Chief Deputy John also said, Samoski had no prior criminal record, and the judge had no reason to keep those weapons from him. I believe whether Samoski had those weapons or not, the outcome would have been the same. I think if a person is motivated to commit that crime for whatever reason, they will find a way to get it done. Now, what do you guys think? Would Stacy Flora be alive today if the judge would have held his weapons a bit longer? Or would the outcome still be the same? Anyway, Daniel Samoski was sentenced to 15 years to life in prison. And next world board hearing is on February of 2029. By the way, they didn't say what the motive for the shooting was or if there even was one. October 15th, 2014, in Lebanon, Ohio. Okay, so this last time on one call, it's about a minute long. Uh, but in my opinion, I think it's pretty disturbing to listen to. And you know, all number one calls are, you know, difficult to listen to. But when it comes to kids and animals, that's just the line that you don't cross. You don't mess with those lives. You're supposed to love them and teach them right from wrong, but most importantly, love them and, you know, prepare them for this earth, this world. They're just innocent lives. And uh, yeah, man, I don't know. This case and this 911 call just really struck a nerve with me. But uh, yeah, here's the 911 call. Warren County 911, where's the emergency? Uh, five East McKinley Street. What is it? Apart five East. You're cutting McKinley. out. Five East McKinley Street, apartment one. <laughs> County, did you get that? Five East. I'm sorry? Five East McKinley? Yeah. Yes. One. And can you please come to the side door? What's going on? Um, my two-year-old bit my newborn daughter's nose, and now it's like completely off, and it won't quit bleeding. Bit his nose? Bit my newborn's nose. Okay. And you should come to the side entrance? Yes, please. What's your name, ma'am? Uh -huh. What's your name? Trailer. <laughs> and what's your phone number? Okay, so according to Warren County Prosecutor, David Fornshell, Robert Trailer was found guilty for cutting off the nose of his then 13-day-old infant. Kinsey. He said he cut her nose off with a knife because it wouldn't stop crying. This whole tragedy happened along East McKinley Street in Lebanon, Ohio. During the 911 call, she said her son had bit her infant's nose off, who by the way is a two-year-old boy. She later changed her statement and said Robert Trailer was the one who did it. When asked why she changed her statement to police, she said it was after she spoke to her son. At first, 
She thought he did it, until one day at the hospital her son pointed to a picture of his sister and said, that's where daddy bit sissy. The infant also arrived at the hospital with two skull fractures and broken ribs. And about a year later, Robert Trailer, who was 26 at the time, was found guilty on child endangering and felonious assault. He was sentenced to 8 years in prison. Prosecutors said justice was served as much as possible with the verdict, with what the law allows. However, again, prosecutor David Fornshell said, When you cause those kind of lifelong permanent injuries to a 13-day-old child, the idea that you'd only go to prison for 8 years to me is just ridiculous. Robert Trailer maintained his innocence, but family members and prosecutors disagreed, saying that 8 years in prison isn't enough for a crime like this. And I agree, by the way. After serving his 8-year sentence, Robert Trailer will remain under police supervision for 3 years. Trailer does have the right to appeal. Kinsey never fully recovered. Her mom says that the young girl has special needs and likely will for the rest of her life. This is a picture of a beautiful baby. Her name is Kinsey. She was born October 2nd, 2014. By October 15th of that year, prosecutors contend that her father, Robert Trailer, used a knife to cut off her nose. There was no nose. All you could see was bone. It was horrific. This picture with Kinsey bit off his sister's nose, but later her story changed and she believed the man behind the attack was her former husband, the baby's father. She said it was her son who told her what really happened. He told me that's where daddy bit sissy. We wanted answers as to why they believe a father would cut off the nose of his newborn. They told me he was off his meds. I mean, he has mental problems, and when you have mental problems, you need to take the right medication. You can't be trying to get high and have a good time. Man, this case was brutal. Poor baby Kinsey. Anyway, uh, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, I'll see you soon. Be safe. Take care.